Hello Church family, this is Paul Delejero. Welcome to this week's study on living the Christian life. Today we will be talking about peace, the true peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Miriam Webster defines peace as a state of tranquility or quietness. It is freedom from trouble or disturbance. Now let me ask you a question. Are you living in, a, in peace right now? For many people around us and all over the world, the answer is sadly no. We are living in a time where we have this global COVID-19 pandemic. And not only that, there are those who live in areas plagued by wars, social and political unrest, ethnic violence, or terrorism. Even if you are spared from such tragedies, you might find your peace disturbed by crime, by harassment, and quarrels with neighbors or co-workers. And sadly, families too are often war zones rather than shelters of peace. Throughout history, mankind has been seeking for peace through military alliances, balances of power, and legal nations. Yet lasting peace still remains an elusive dream even during times of relative peace, nations struggle with internal conflicts and crimes. Many people desire for inner peace. They may search for it in solitude or in their relationships. Others hope to find peace in nature, taking vacation trips, hiking in mountains and the wilderness. Now, some people seem to find that inner peace, but in a short while, they soon come to realize that that kind of peace is superficial and short-lived. So, where can you find real peace? In his letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul spoke of a certain kind of peace, the peace of God that transcends, that goes beyond, that surpasses all understanding. So, what is this kind of peace? The Bible says that man on his own cannot know peace because he is separated from the source. But there is hope. True peace, my friends, is readily available from God our Father, who is the God of peace, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. And peace is one of the fruit of the Spirit. You can find this in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, the third one, peace. And you have all the other gifts of the Holy Spirit in there. My friends, peace is a gift of God's grace to those who love and obey Jesus Christ. It is a gift from God and it is consistent with God's character. The scripture often refers to God as the God of peace. Now, if God is peace, then to know God is to enjoy his peace. And the scripture says that the closer we draw to God, the more of his peace we can actually enjoy. God gives us clear instructions about how to draw near to him. Psalm chapter 24 says, Who may ascend or who may go to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? It is the one who has what? Clean hands and pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Scripture is clear that we cannot make ourselves clean enough or pure enough to earn the presence of the Lord. So, how do we draw near enough to experience God's peace? Jesus said, Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. My friends, we come into the presence of the Lord through His Son, Jesus Christ. When we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died on the cross to purchase our forgiveness, we are counted as righteous. Our sins are forgiven because Jesus already paid the price for them. Only then can we have peace with God. This peace that initially comes to us from having our conscience wiped clean, it grows as we get to know God better. 
Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 tells us, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. When we grow in understanding of the depths and riches of God, of His love towards us, our minds and spirits begin to rest in His power and wisdom. We begin to understand what that He really will make all things work together for our good. We learn that His purposes will be accomplished, that we can really trust in Him. My friends, trust means we have set our hearts to believe God, whatever may happen. This is exactly what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they trusted God. Even with the prospect of being sentenced to death, death by being burned in a fiery furnace, they had the courage and the peace to defy King Nebuchadnezzar on his decree that they worship his golden image. You can read this story in Daniel chapter 3. How were they able to do this? My friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew who God is. They knew his character. They knew his attributes, that God can be trusted and that he is sovereign. My friends, when we insist on being in control, we sabotage God's desire to let us live in peace. When we choose worry rather than faith, we cannot live in peace. Jesus warned us often about fear and worry. Worry is the enemy of peace. God invites us to cast our cares, our burdens upon Him, and then let it go. When we develop a lifestyle of making the Lord our refuge, we begin to live in the peace of God. Psalm 91 verse 1 holds the secret to living in the power of God. It says, He who dwells in the shelter, in the sacred place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I trust. That secret place in our hearts is where we go to meet with God. When we choose to live there, in that secret place, and stay under His shadow, staying in constant communion with Him, we can remain peaceful even when circumstances uh, may not be. We can find that in times of trouble, we can find peace, that His peace that, is, that passes all understanding. My friends, we were created to live in peace with God. Sin destroyed peace and still destroys it to everyone who refuses Jesus' offer for salvation. However, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in his heart that Jesus is the only way to God and is willing to surrender to him as Savior and Lord can have peace with God. Let me close with a story. There was a painting contest and the objective was to find the perfect picture of peace. The challenge stirred the imagination of artists from everywhere, and paintings arrived from far and wide. Finally, the great day of judging the perfect painting of peace arrived, and the field had been narrowed down to just two paintings. As the judge pulled the cover from the first one, a hush fell over the crowd. A mirror lay mere smooth lake reflected green birches under the soft blush of the evening sky. Along the grassy shore, a flock of sheep grazed undisturbed. When the crowd saw this, they exclaimed, Surely this is the winner. But when the second painting was uncovered, the crowd grasped in surprise. In this painting, a violent waterfall flowed down on a rocky cliff. The crowd almost, could almost feel its cold, penetrating spray. Stormy gray clouds threatened to explode with the, with the lightning, the wind, and the rain. In the midst of the thundering noise and bitter chill, a frail-looking tree clung to the rocks at the edge of the falls. And in the tree, a little bird had built a nest. Content and undisturbed in her stormy surroundings, she rested on her eggs. 
with her eyes closed and her wings ready to cover her little ones, she manifested peace, peace that transcends all earthly turmoil. Perhaps you, like a whole lot of people, having been have been searching for the kind of peace, for the kind of peace in the first picture. But the problem is that it is not, not true peace. And that's the kind of peace the world is looking for. That peace is relative. It is temporary and it is fleeting because it is grounded in circumstances. Real peace, my friends, the kind that is depicted in the second picture is the one that's ready and available to you when you take shelter in the arms of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My friends, if you have never invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior, to be your Lord, you don't have that promise of that peace. But you can if you'll open your heart to Him today. And if you're a believer, you have no cause for fear, only faith. He is there and He is able. Let us pray. Father God, how grateful we are for your gift of peace, that despite all the noise, the troubles that surrounds us, Lord, you would give us your peace, peace that passes all understanding. We pray that we will just draw near to you and that we will be able to trust even in the hardest of times. Help us to learn to trust you more and more, Lord, and give your glory and worship you in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, family. See you next week. God bless you all.